Welcome to Hochoka Podcast. The Sundance and the Paschal Mysteries. The great annual religious ceremonies of the Lakota and Christian traditions. Let's talk about their surprising similarities and very important differences. Hello, Metakiepi, and welcome to Hochoka here at the center of St. Joseph's Indian School's campus. I'm Scott Wooster, today's Hochoka host. We're glad you have joined our circle to hear Dr. Damian Costello. As the Easter season approaches, he joins us again to bring another fresh perspective on Catholicism through an indigenous lens. So welcome, Damien. Good to see you, Scott. Absolutely. Likewise. Mm. Uh, We're going to talk today a little bit about, uh, we'll kind of kick it off today talking about Sundance. Uh, And can you just give our viewers who might not have any idea uh, what what that is, what Sundance is? Sure. And I'm I'm hoping you'll help us out with that, knowing that, you know, you've been involved with the Sundance for Mm -hmm. many, many years. Yeah. Uh, The Sundance is an annual summer ceremony lasts about a week long, 10 days with the preparation and then the dance itself. And it uh, it's to honor and make relatives with the buffalo mm-hmm. among many other, other things. Um, but there is four days of dancing that are at the high point around the sacred tree mm-hmm. where the dancers fast from food and water. And the final day, final full day, many are pierced and tied to the tree, which we'll talk about some more. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm curious your your experiences at the Sundance. Right. And I would say uh, as a thumbnail sketch for just as globally as a guy could possibly take it, because you and I could mm-hmm. sit here and talk about it for days, and I would never get tired of talking about it. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorite topics. But it's one, uh, it's it's uh, We Want What Cheap Be. Um, it's a sacred dance, and, and it's a... Uh, one of the seven sacred uh, rites of the Lakota people. And, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's the granddaddy of them all, kind of. You know, you have your Nipi ceremony where you go into Sweat Lodge, which is a little more, it is more common and done throughout the year. Um, going up on the hill, you're on Blacha, uh seeking a vision, crying out for a vision, which is... Uh, uh, less common than a nipi for sure, and sometimes paired with the Sundance too as a preparation for Sundance. But Sundance is uh, is that that big one, and and the idea is for uh, the Sundance that that I am a part of is Okichiapi. We want Wachipi, which is uh, Okichiapi is to help the people, so it helps the people Sundance, and that's really, in my estimation, what what that is about is is it's people going and you suffer a little bit at dancing giving of yourself you know feeding people is whatever part you might bring to it and sharing that uh so that that those who are having a hard time those suffering in the world uh might get some help mm-hmm. yeah. i love how you brought that up because that's really the core of the dance you know that the people may live yeah um <clears throat> when you come to the sun dance at first the first thing you're going to know and you're going to think about and be amazed at is the suffering that the dancers mm-hmm. willingly undergo. Yeah. But you yeah. know that uh, it's through that suffering that there's just this incredible uh, unification of everyone who's there and mm-hmm. this transformation, right? You, you come out of it feeling completely alive and um, having been given the, the power to live, the Wakan power to mm-hmm. to live fully, mm-hmm. that paradox, like through suffering, full life emerges. Yeah, yeah, and it's absolute humility at its basest level. Mm-hmm. It's uh, the the ikche wichasha, or the common man, the simple man, and and I would say common man, simple or common woman, simple woman too. You know, we're we're nobody special. You come and you give what you have. Mm-hmm. Um, you you. Uh, you and I both raised in uh, the Christian tradition, mm-hmm. um, and uh, my Easter experiences don't reflect my my Sundance experiences mm-hmm. even even closely. Uh, what are the the differences, or how you always you always make sense of these, find similarities where somebody else might not find them, and that's kind of the magic of mm-hmm. of what we have here. So, what what do you see there? Well, first, I'd like to recognize what you're saying. You know, on the surface, and I think. 
even a big part of the experiences are very different. Like mm -hmm. this isn't to say like, no, actually it's, it's exactly the same. Right. And if you're doing one, you're doing the other. No, they're very different. Yeah. And the people who are doing them understand them to be different. And um, personally, I think they're both very, very good to do. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> the, the Holy Week and Easter experience, it's in a building. Mm -hmm. You're mostly sitting or kneeling or standing, yeah. right? There isn't that same aspect of movement, unification in that way, and not the same level of suffering by any means. Right. And the music is very different. Right, uh, absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, as a kid, I would say, yeah. Church music can be rather boring sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it is very different. But I think uh, if we dig a little deeper, that the, the church experience is getting at something similar. Maybe not what we're doing, but what we're remembering when we're there. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if you've heard this, but I have heard at Sundances people say, people who weren't even Christian in any way, Jesus was the first Sundancer. Mm -hmm. There was this recognition, uh, particularly by those Lakota people and then other tribes as well who participated in the Sundance and Catholic tradition. There's a real similarity in the piercing that's involved with the Sundance, mm -hmm. the suffering there, the willingness to give yourself your very body and your very flesh so mm -hmm. that the people may live and the stories that are told about Jesus, mm -hmm. that he willingly gave his own flesh, was pierced so that the people may live. And so if you, if you have that lens, that someone sitting in church, no, they're not doing the Sundance or anything remotely like it, but we were remembering and participating in a holy person who did. Mm -hmm. So that's the starting point for the similarities. Right, and I, I really like that one. I've, I've heard that said before, um, about Jesus being the first sun dancer. And I, I, as you were saying that, I'm thinking Jesus on his way to do what he was mm -hmm. doing had this, let's see if this makes, try this on for size. He sure. had no doubt that he was going to do what he was going to do, mm -hmm. but did he feel doubt as, as a human being? I'm, I'm assuming he did. I can't, you know, who could say, but um, as a sun dancer, one might feel the same way as you as you prepare for those four days. You're looking at the fourth day and looking at this offering and, and doing it in a certain way. And you know that you're going to do it, but your mind is filled with these doubts as you dance and you still turn that over to something bigger. So he, we came in here and you said, I never would have put these two things together. And right. I think you pulled out what is probably the core experience that we could point to. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've heard this said that, um, you know, I never understood what Jesus might have, must have felt, mm -hmm. right? Like, what did he know? What did he feel? We don't know. Mm -hmm. But I would guess he felt something like a Sundancer feels. Mm -hmm. That incredible anticipation. And let's be honest, mm -hmm. fear yeah. beforehand. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And even um, in some ways, having, you know, it's a, it's a four-year commitment Right? Yep. So you're not just yep. doing it once, ideally. Correct. In some ways, the second, third, fourth year are even tougher. Right. Because the first time, you don't know what you're getting right. into. Yeah, yeah. You don't yep. know what that's like. Yep. And you think the second time, well, getting pierced again, no big deal. You think that maybe six months ahead. Right. A few days beforehand, you're like, yep. you know what's coming. The fear of the known. The fear of the known. Yeah. So I think <clears throat> the experience of the sun dancer and the uh, experience of Jesus the agony in the garden where mm. he sweat blood because he knew what he was going to experience um, pair together so beautifully. And and so sun dancers, even if they're not, you know, and I don't want to say they're Christians or like Christians, mm -hmm. but it's ironic that a lot of Christians came in and said, what you're doing is awful. That's the heathen's work. That's mm -hmm. devil worship. Actually, those people have the closest thing to the experience of Christ. Right that you could possibly have. Yeah, without trying to be that. And I, I don't think anybody's ever said, this is what I'm trying to do, but the similarities are uh, yeah. glaringly obvious if you're paying attention to it closely yes. enough. Yeah. yeah, and it's you also mentioned him, him in the garden, and you mentioned the word scared. 
I assume that he was Zik Jewi Chasha and scared mm-hmm. at that point too. You know, you and then you have the save yourself if you know you're the son of God. You can you can set yourself free from any of this. But he knew what he needed to do and was going to stick mm-hmm. to to his path. So we can make those uh, those parallels between the the suffering uh, of a sun dancer and what Jesus might have gone through. But what else do we have there that we need to look at? So. Part of this requires imagination. You know, I think all religious ceremony of any kind, a big part of it is imagination. Mm-hmm. And Sundance, I think, is so powerful in that it does shape your, your imagination and helps you to see all the things that are being talked about, all the imagery. And sometimes Catholic spaces, well, we're not doing as well with that. But the whole week before Easter is a reenactment of the whole week Jesus had before he died, Mm -hmm. up until his death and resurrection. So we have Palm Sunday when Jesus enters into Jerusalem. He's greeted as as the Messiah, a conquering hero, this great military leader. The crowds are surrounding him. The authorities, the Romans are, you know, they're nervous, they're scared. What's going to happen? The temple authorities. And so for the rest of the week, each day marks a different part of that story. So one little tiny detail that I only learned, I don't know, maybe it's 20 years now, but I was relatively old, Spy Wednesday. When you go to church on Spy on Wednesday of Holy Week, you remember when Judas betrayed Jesus. Mm-hmm. Thursday, then you move into the Last Supper. And each day has different parts of the ceremony. Starting on Thursday, going until Easter Vigil on Saturday, that's considered one ceremony. So every day of the year, you have mass. You only have one, that's considered one mass, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So you reenact Jesus at the Last Supper, and then you process as a community, ideally, to what's called the Chapel of Repose. They bring the sacrament to a different place with candles around it, and everybody prays in silence. And the idea is you're joining him at the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm-hmm. Next day you come and you reenact the crucifixion. And so if you are entering into this intentionally and you're taking it seriously, and I would say, if you take this on with the heart and the passion of a sun dancer, mm-hmm. you're entering into that very completely. And, and one experience I've had in my life was going to a monastery in New Mexico, Christ in the Desert. Beautiful, beautiful location, way out in the wilderness in the canyon lands of, of the Southwest. And so you're alone with that story. Mm-hmm. And everybody there is living that story. It's very much like going to a Sundance where everybody is living that mm-hmm. ceremony at the same time. You and I talk about uh, how things have changed uh, historically, how, how difficult it is in modern times to be close to the land is some, is a thought that we've talked about before. But I, I also think about that in terms of there are things that we do nowadays in both Easter and in Sundance that make it harder for us to connect uh, with mm-hmm. with each of those ceremonies. And you, you, you talk about um, in in the church getting getting close and intention being important but also imagination being mm-hmm. being a big part of that and i remember as a kid watching uh this is in the 70s and and the movie of the passion mm-hmm. you know was on and i remember being absolutely captivated by that there was not a more gripping story that a kid could read or see on tv than than that at a at a your early age and and when you're impressionable and certainly when i went to sundance for the first time as a spectator it was the same way it was just it's so captivating and and the, the imagination is such a big part of that sundance has the issues now of you know, you're fasting. You're you're trying to. The folks that are out there in the in the circle came out of air conditioning in their vehicles, in their homes. They're on medication for uh, diabetes, high high blood pressure, and they have to continue to take them. In the history, folks were fasting regularly. They were always part of ceremonies. Life was a ceremony in some mm-hmm. ways, 
And there's a similarity with the Easter piece of that, too, I would think. I can't speak to it much, but, you know, now we're a little more confined in in the way we, you know, you go to a drive through get in your car, drive to the church, get out, or whatever that might look like. Can mm-hmm. you speak to that a little oh, bit? I, I mean, I think that's another great parallel, that, that our ceremonies have lost power, some more than others, mm-hmm. not necessarily because of the ceremony, but because of us. Yeah. You know, we, have, we are transforming ourselves radically. And I know last time I was here, you talked about um, going to a workshop on you know, what our cell phones are doing to us. Mm-hmm. How do we yeah. address this? Yeah. I mean, we very willingly are jumping into patterns of existence that make it very difficult to remain the human beings we've been mm-hmm. for hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah. And so... Maybe as we think about Easter and if you think about Sundance coming up, let's take a good look, honest look in the mirror and say, what do we need to think about in a better way? How can we challenge ourselves, right? Is everyone going to run out and do the Sundance tomorrow? No. Right. But in the Catholic tradition, we have days of fasting. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes it's really hard to take that seriously. But then I witness Sundancers who will do that four days in a row Mm -hmm. out in the hot sun yeah and you realize well wait a minute there's incredible gifts and power that come out of taking those things seriously Mm -hmm. which which is the in the point i think it's a challenge to immerse yourself right i mean because i think it's easy for a sun dancer to come out of a a day of sun dancing and you go looking for your cell phone or Mm -hmm. somebody to walk out of a church service you know you celebrate the resurrection of Jesus or you, you watch, you know, it's Good Friday and you're watching him, uh, you know, be crucified and you walk out and you the next thing you're on your phone. But mm-hmm. if you immerse yourself in either one of those ways, you come out of there. Um, the, it's, it's simple. You know, you get out of it what you put into it. Mm-hmm. It's always been that way at Sundance mm-hmm. and, and it's that way uh, in church. So I mean, the more you immerse yourself, the more you're going you're gonna to glean from it. It's the wisdom of our ancestors, mm-hmm. you know, and our elders. Uh, you and I have both taken that seriously. Mm-hmm. Like, have we done it perfectly? No. Mm-hmm. But we know that there's these are, these are treasures. Yeah. And let's let them shine as best we can. Yeah. Agreed. Um, wh- what do you think each tradition can learn from mm. each other? A lot. I think a lot. Um you know, I think the first thing to recognize or to help us think about this is, you know, we went to this this phase and we talked a little bit about it, about how we were very judgmental, right? And I'm thinking of non-Indigenous people coming in and saying, oh, all that Indigenous ceremony stuff is garbage. Mm-hmm. It's got to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. And then we went through a phase where it was like, oh, well, you know, what everybody does is good and it's the same, basically. Mm-hmm. Different paths to the same place. And what's helped me in being around these different ceremonies is to think about, well, that's good, but then let's ask the question, how are they, how are they different? What are they trying to do that's different from each other? And so I think on, on the Sundance side of things, um, what the understanding is, well, I think for both of them, they're, they're both about making a covenant, a covenant with the spirit world and everything around you. Mm -hmm. Now the Sundance way, it's about making a covenant with the buffalo and where you are on the on that land, mm-hmm. right? It really connects mm-hmm. you to the land, the species around you, and the people that you are close to. Yeah. You know, I love how Black Elk talks about this in the sacred pipe. He just talks about all of the, all of creation being renewed at the end of the Sundance. Like that ceremony didn't just make us feel better. It just didn't help us. It helped everything around us. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. I mean, I yeah. think so, so many of us need that connection to the land if we're going to do better. Mm-hmm. Now, the the Christian way, the, the Catholic way in Easter, um, the similarity is that it's also making a covenant, but it's making a covenant with the creator and sort of transforming creation in the sense that we know we're broken. Mm-hmm. There's too much brokenness. Mm-hmm. There's so much brokenness we can't get our heads around it, we can only sort of plug those holes in the dike. 
Mm -hmm. right? And I think what Black Elk found in his faith in Wanikia, he who, he who lives, he who makes live, is that there's an ultimate transformation of everything that's ultimately going to happen, this hope in the future. Mm -hmm. So let's, if you pair those things together, the sort of ultimate confidence and the goodness of everything around you in the Lakota way, mm -hmm. like, no, everything is good and has been good. And if we had done better, it would have remained good. But then also, there is still that hope that everything is going to be transformed despite all the darkness. Yeah. And so to have a foot in both of those worlds, that's an incredibly powerful way to walk together as people into the future. So when you say, uh, use the word covenant, mm -hmm. I have an idea of what it means to me. I've got my own connotation of that. What, what does it mean to you in, in your, uh, what's your reference for that? You know, I think the Lakota way really uh, fleshes this out in a, in a beautiful, beautiful way. Um, the hunka ceremony, mm -hmm. the, the making of relatives, mm -hmm. where you, two people come together and their families or two tribes come together and make a relationship in a new way. It doesn't mean that they had no connection before. Maybe they were disconnected. But the ceremony enacts a new connection to mm -hmm. the degree that you are now relatives. Mm -hmm. And so when you make a covenant, you're making new relatives. And in the Lakota way, it's with everything around you. Now, I think um, what the Sundance helps in particular for Catholics to think about is that Catholics have been good about thinking about making relatives with the Creator and their human beings around them. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of gaps in the rest of our relatives. We don't even call mm -hmm. the species around us relatives. Mm -hmm. And so to take the Sundance seriously means that, oh, wait a minute, those are our relatives too. Right. The Buffalo Nation, the, the four-leggeds, the winged ones, the water, the air, everything is a relative. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think um, can help us to go forward in a better way. Right, and to learn, to learn mm -hmm. from each other, as you mm -hmm. said. And the, the phrase is mitaku uh, ye oyas, and you mm -hmm. and I have heard that often, mm -hmm. probably use it often, I know I do for mm -hmm. sure. Um, everything's related. I mean, that's a covenant right there. You can build that covenant with everything that there is, of course. And and I'll if you don't mind I'll end with with a, a thought you can jump on it if if you if there's something you want to add mm -hmm. to it but it, if the Sundance leader that I know uh, always says that the hoop is broken the the sacred circle is broken the colors the the black the the red the white or the yellow and the white all the all of the different races of, mm -hmm. of the earth. Um, the only way to bring that hoop back together is if you bring all the races together in order to do that. And so I, it, on a very small level, that means at the Sundance, it doesn't matter what color you are, what ethnicity, uh, nationality, you're welcome there. And on a deeper level, of course, what it means is that all of creation is included there if you want to heal things and you're going to pray for the people if you're going to... Okichiapi, we want Wachipi, you have to have everything involved in it. And and that means uh, as inclusive as you can possibly get, which I love. So um, if if there's one thing, and I know you you, you and I know each other well enough to, to know we're simpatico on this piece mm -hmm. here, but they, um, we need everything to come together, whether it's uh, Catholicism, indigenous, or whatever way there might be. I think we're all pointed, need to point in the same direction. And I think the ultimate point of the Sundance and when you engage Holy Week and Easter in the right way is you come out of that believing in that possibility yeah. and feeling that reality on the ground. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for uh, weaving and getting there with me. That's great stuff. Yeah, thank Very you, Scott. good stuff. Thank mm -hmm. you. And we say thank you to our viewers who have joined us here at Hochoka at the Center of St. Joseph's Indian Schools campus, where we talk about issues that are central to Native American education today. Until next time, stay centered.